Hi, welcome along to another video. This time we'll be looking at various countries and their weather modification activities. We'll start in Mexico. This information is from the book from the 90, late 1970s called Weather Modification, Programs, Problems, Policy and Potential. That book was released by the American Congressional Research Service, like I say, at the end of 1979, something like that. So regarding Mexico, in a 1976 report on weather modification activities in Mexico, the Mexican Ministry of Hydraulic Resources summarised ongoing projects in three principal areas of the country. So in 1976, there were three projects going on in Mexico, modifying the weather. Initiated in 1949, in other words, it was started in 1949 with the purpose of augmenting runoff for hydroelectric power generation. Now keep in mind hydroelectric power is classed as sustainable, green and climate friendly. After 1954, ground-based silver iodide generators, weather modification generators, replaced aircraft seeding and targets and control areas were set up for evaluation. Since 1956, selection of weather modification days was randomised. Following the 1974 season, weather modification operations were suspended and a re-evaluation of the project was undertaken, preparatory to a redesign of the seeding operations, the weather modification operations. A restricted area pilot project was underway to study techniques of weather modification with salt in view of the warm clouds passing over the area. And from the next page, in 1976 a decision was made by the governor of the state to contract continuation of this weather modification project to an American firm which would employ aircraft seeding or aircraft weather modification. It's not clear who that American company is. 24th of March, 2023. Mexico News. Defense Ministry announces weather modification plan to combat drought. So Mexico is just about to have its weather modified, which has been going on since 1949. Greetings to any Mexicans watching. Moving on to the United Arab Emirates. As you know, regular followers of this channel will know the UAE has been leading the effort to see clouds and increase precipitation. So the UAE has been leading the effort to modify its weather and increase rainfall. Links to the information shown are in the usual place. So in the National, there's an article from the 19th of March, 2023. And if you scroll down on the page, there's um, a little box cloud seeding in the UAE in pictures. And there you can see an image. The first image in the slideshow is the plane there with the flares attached to the wing. There's quite a few pictures to look at in that slideshow. And some cool ones at the end there, as you can see. I'll just skip back through the ones at the end. There you go. So definitely something to share there on your social networking platforms. So in the first sentence, hygroscopic water attracting salt flares are attached to an aircraft, etc. Typical cloud seeding stuff. I'm highlighting there, water attracting. The reason I'm doing that is relating to drought. So it's often denied that weather modification, for example, to increase rainfall, causes drought elsewhere. This is obviously incorrect. It absolutely does cause a drought somewhere if you continue to do it decade after decade, such as in California, which has had a yearly weather modification program since the early 1950s. So you're now coming up to nearly 75 years of attracting water to a different area. Another term for that, atmospheric moisture redistribution regarding California, California state government do it and also the Northern California Power Agency. 
we'll get into America some more in a bit. In the Al Arabia news, there's an article from March this year that talks about the forest fires in southwestern France from summer 2022 and how they are likely to return. You may have seen stories about the fires in southeastern Spain in 2022. That's the area next door to southwest France. Same forests, same fire. So we just spoke about attracting water to another area and it causes drought. Southeastern France has been modifying its weather in that area along with northern Italy, Austria, Switzerland and southwestern Germany, southern Germany, for absolutely decades. In some cases, the usual 70 years, nearly 75 years worth or longer. They are hail suppression programs that are normally financed by collectives of grape growers, vine growers. In other words, your wine producers. And it's carried out to suppress hail to stop the hail damaging vines, grape vines. All that information has been covered in previous videos. So a huge region, the Alps region, in the wine growing areas have weather modification programs. And the areas outside of that area, southwestern France, southeastern Spain, are burning. The drying out and burning. You can make your own conclusion from that. For those of you that are watching this, that still ask that question, why don't they ever do it in Africa? Let's talk about Kenya. And before we do, keep in mind, Egypt, Ethiopia, Zimbabwe, Namibia, South Africa, Morocco and Nigeria have all had or plan to have weather modification programs. Again, this has all been covered in previous videos. An operational hail suppression program was initiated in 1967 in Kenya, about 130 miles northwest of Nairobi. The target areas, covering about 45,000 acres where select tea is grown, are shown in figure 4, which you just saw. The weather modification program, supported through 1975 by private tea companies, employed aircraft for dispensing silver iodide at the base of the clouds. More than 5,700 individual cumulus cloud cells were seeded during this period, with an average reduction in damage to tea of about 40%, based on comparisons of hail damage from seeded and non-seeded cloud systems. So that answers your question, does it work? Yes. There will be people that will argue that, hey, look, it's, it didn't damage the crops. This is a good thing. Okay, where a select tea is grown. Select means special, a bit more upmarket. Not the tea you're drinking. And again, it's paid for by private tea companies. So private companies modifying the weather to influence and protect their crops. If you don't know about China and how China is involved in this to a next level level, you should look into that as well. It's currently a drought in South China, but the north of China has a proper full on large weather modification program spread across the Tibetan plateau. China aims to have full control of its weather systems nationwide by 2025, owning it as such. There's a quick look again at the map. On the 25th of March 2023, Focus Taiwan News, Taiwan uses cloud seeding to fight drought. Taiwan uses weather modification to fight drought. America, your extreme weather events are set to continue from the 21st of March 2023 in the Big News Network, Western US spending more on cloud seeding to flood Colorado River. Nevada, Colorado, California, Idaho, they all have some serious programs going on. So the Western states in the United States are spending more on weather modification to flood the Colorado River. 
you can expect property damage and floods etc to come. That was Colorado in Wyoming. Also the 21st of March 2023, cloud seeding in the Sierra Madres will stop early due to a high snowpack. Not sure if it's as high as the Sierra Nevadas, but Wyoming have announced that they are going to stop their weather modification program early because there is so much snowpack. Snow. So you know that's generally for hydroelectric power. The more snow you have, the more it melts, the more water runs off and goes through turbines to generate electricity. As mentioned earlier, this is classed as sustainable green energy. Fake snow. I'm pretty sure from um, this clip that this is in California, but I could be wrong because there is no information to accompany it in the sense of the person doesn't provide links to the videos they show. So this is what fake snow looks like or snow that's been created by weather modification. The reason it's round is because the nucleus, the particulate at the centre of the snow, is a uniform shape. As you know, no snowflake is the same because its nucleus as a grain or particulate of sand or dirt are identical. I know many of you have seen this type of snow before and commented on social networking platforms about this. It's been seen in the UK before and most people are getting the general idea of what that is when they see it. It is not hail. Round snow that looks like styrofoam balls is snow created by weather modification programs. Fake snow. It is used just to bring atmospheric moisture to the ground level for water runoff purposes. Although it should be mentioned, Colorado State have carried out weather modification programs to increase their snowpack for tourism reasons. If there isn't enough snow for skiers and snowboarders, they modify the weather to increase the snowpack for tourism purposes dollars or something. So we finish up this video with a very quick look at the UK's Financial Times where there's a letter from Bob Ward, the Policy and Communications Director of the Grantham Research Institute on Climate Change and the Environment. And Bob is saying our contingency plan, so not yours, not mine, their contingency plan would mean spending massively on geoengineering solutions, CDR, but perhaps also on solar radiation management to lower global temperatures below the 1.5 degrees centigrade threshold. It's currently 10 degrees cooler than what it should be in the UK, just so you know. Seeds require more or less a temperature of 15 degrees to germinate, and you are not seeing that yet in the UK you can expect higher food prices in the autumn due to lower yields. That's it for this video. Look after yourselves. Take care. Keep strong-minded. Keep clear-minded. You are not a conspiracy theorist. See you next time.